All right, now I'm finna go to my next subject. Yeah, man, this probably the main subject that I need to talk about the most because, you know, all this holiness talk, man, and holiness is the same thing as living a consecrated life. It's the same thing as sanctification. It's the same thing as being totally committed. It's the same thing as a life of obedience. It's the same thing as complete surrender. It's what every Christian is called to, holiness, man. And it's the same as wholeheartedness. I I used to say holiness is wholeness, a wholehearted commitment to God. You know, it's, it's when you serve God with your whole heart, man. You know what I mean? Holiness. Uh, so, you know, somebody be like, okay, you know what I'm saying? But how do I live like that? How do I get like that? The key to holiness is relationship and intimacy with God. Now, salvation, I'm going to talk about this too, faith and works. Uh, because you, you, you step in the door by faith. You know what I mean? You, 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 you can't clean yourself up and then um, you can't clean yourself up. You can't be saved by cleaning yourself up. You can't be saved by cleaning yourself up. The way that you come in the door and the way that you live this life is by faith. You have to believe that Jesus died for you. You know what I mean? And that he rose from the dead. You know, he conquered death, hell, and the grave. Romans chapter 10 type stuff. So, you get saved by faith. That's where it all starts is by faith. Now, check this out, though. This is something that God showed me, though. Now, you have to grow, though. You know, now, like I said, you don't get saved by cleaning yourself up, but you have to be prepared to uh, to let God clean you up and you have to cooperate. You have to. It's a partnership. And the reason I say that is. I don't want people thinking that uh, like you, you do it yourself, like you do do it, but you do it with the help of God. So you come to God by faith. It, it don't matter where you starting it, whatever you had going on, you know what I mean? Whatever you had going on, you come to God by faith, believing that Jesus did what he did and receiving it on a personal level. He died for my sins. He rose from the dead so that I could be saved. I believe on him. I put my faith in him. So it starts by faith, but you also have to live this life by faith. You know, uh, you get saved by faith, but you grow by putting in work. And if you don't want to grow, then you're not saved. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, let me get to my notes, man. Uh, Yeah, but anyway, holiness is perfected, man. To live holy, it comes through relationship and intimacy with God. That's how you perfect holiness. That's how you achieve holiness. Holiness is when you're totally committed to God and, and you walk in power over sin. Sin is not controlling you no more. You know what I'm saying? You have dominion over sin. Now, you you receive dominion over sin upon salvation. Romans chapter six, you set free. You're set free from the dominion of sin because you're under the grace of God. And one thing about the grace of God, Titus 2.11, uh, Romans chapter six, the grace of God sets you free from the dominion of sin because uh, that sin the grace of God sets you free from the dominion of sin. You died. Now you're in Christ. Christ overcame sin, you know, so now we're in Christ. Um, yeah, Romans chapter six, man, it says that we've been set free from the dominion of sin. You know what I mean? So we receive power over sin to be led by his spirit. Um, Let me see how I want to flip this or how I want to preach this. Because he he gave me a lot. But um, what it come down to, man, you're saved by faith. You know what I mean? But you got to put in work. The right faith always produces the right works, the right lifestyle, the right obedience, 
the right corresponding action, man. Abraham was the, um, and I want to talk about faith first because you have to look to Jesus. You know what I'm saying? You got to look to Jesus, man. Um, you have to look to Jesus, like, but he'll help you to get to where you're trying to go. Cause we talk all this talk about holiness, but you got to tell people how to get there. You know, so it starts by faith. Don't ever get that twisted, man. You got to put your faith in Christ. Your righteousness is because of your faith. You're made righteous because of your faith in Christ. But I know I know human nature. I know how people are trying to run with that. So I got to more fully explain it. I got to more fully explain it. You know what I mean? Uh, you're made righteous, acceptable in the sight of God, righteous, your sins forgiven. You become a child of God. You're born again by faith in Jesus, faith in what he did. But that comes with a responsibility. If you're going to be a child of God, if you're born again, if you've been made new through your faith in Christ, it's a responsibility that come with that. Um, I was going to say something else. But yeah, you know what I mean? So, oh yeah. So look at Abraham, Genesis 15. He was, he was, uh, his, his, he believed God and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. I think Romans chapter three say it was imputed unto him. Romans chapter three or chapter four, his righteousness was imputed. So God looked at him as being righteous because of his faith. But look at Genesis 26, five. It says that, oh, yeah, yeah, here, here we go. In, in, in Genesis 26, 5, it said that he lived a life of obedience, though. He obeyed God. His lifestyle was pleasing unto God. Because, see, some people will take righteousness by faith and, and they'll go left with it. But, you know, if, if your heart is right, then you'll do right with that. But anyway... Genesis 26, 5, it says, because, well, I'll, I'll go to verse four and I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven and will give unto thy seed all these countries and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes and my laws. So Abraham, he was a man of faith, but he was also a man of obedience. And then if you look at Jesus in seven, I think it's 721, you know, he was saying, uh, uh, the people that's going to inherit the kingdom are the people that do the will of God. So when you really have faith, it's going to lead to you doing the will of God. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my father, which is in heaven. So check this out. But we're saved by faith. We're not saved because because of what we do. I'm not saved because I live holy, but I live holy because I'm saved and I'm saved because of grace through faith. Grace through faith is how we're saved. But when you're really saved or when you really have faith, it's going to lead to you doing the will of God. So God can look at either one. He can say you're saved because your faith, or he can say you're saved because you did the will of God, because they both go together. So the right kind of faith, just remember this right here. You're saved by faith, but the right kind of faith will always produce the right kind of works, the right kind of lifestyle, the right kind of obedience, the right kind of corresponding action. You know what I'm saying? Real faith produces a lifestyle. You know what I mean? And then you got to remember, it's called being born again. So you enter the kingdom as a child. You have to grow to maturity. And this is where we talk about perfecting holiness. And it comes through relationship. And then another thing about faith, faith is a cycle. You, uh, God gave me this revelation yesterday. Jesus is the beginning and the end. He said, I'm the root and the offspring of David. Faith produces works and works also builds your faith. Faith produces works, but works builds your faith. 
You know what I mean? If you think about it, you know, you 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 come to the kingdom, you you believe in God by faith. That's how you get saved. So then that's why Jesus said we uh, man don't survive by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So we let's talk about the word of God for a minute. So. So check this out. He said, uh, you believe in God by faith. But the more you hear the word, the more it builds your faith. You have faith to believe the gospel, but the more word you receive, the more it builds your faith. And it's the same thing with prayer. You know, you pray to God because you have faith, but spending time in prayer actually builds your faith. And then <laughs> I'm just kind of flowing with it, man. I, I done left them notes. Uh, it's see, it, it's tricky, man. You're saved by faith without works, but faith will always produce works and works is what help you grow. And then there's different type of works, but I'm talking about the relationship works, the work that you put in on your relationship with God. That's what helps you grow. And, uh, it's the same thing with deliverance. You know what I mean? Um, he said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Now, remember, when you got saved, you became free, but your sin nature will try to deceive you. The devil will try to deceive you. And, and, it, and it comes down to manifestation because you can be free. Like in the like, really, you're free, but you can still have habits. You can still have bondages, even though you're saved. It's really deception. You know what I mean? But but the thing is. When you become saved, you're free, but the devil ain't going to just ain't going to let you know that you got to figure you got to figure out who you are in Christ. The devil ain't going to tell you the devil's still going to try to deal with you like you the old you. When you get saved, the devil's still going to try to deal with you like you the old you. Now, when you get saved, if you have a genuine born again encounter with Christ, it's some stuff that's going to fall off of you right when you get saved. You know what I'm saying? It might be some stuff fall off of you when you get baptized in water. It might be some stuff fall off of you when you get baptized in the Holy Ghost. But you know what I'm saying? But but check this out. You have to you have to be renewed. You have to learn the new you. But check this out. Uh, you're not going to always feel free. You're not going to always feel delivered. You're not going to always feel healed. You know what I mean? And uh, if you want a manifestation, yeah, this this what he gave me too. If you want a manifestation on the word of God, you got to give God a manifestation on your faith. You know what I mean? Uh, and that means putting in work. You know what I mean? You want God to manifest his word if it's not already manifested. You want God to manifest his word, then you need to manifest your faith. You know what I mean? And, and that comes the prayer, the word fasting because I, I, we had a discussion, man. And we was talking about basically deliverance. Like if somebody is saved, you know, they're a Christian, but they struggling with something. So you're saved. You already believed on God, but say, say a person struggling with smoking cigarettes or something like that, but you already saved, you know what I mean? Uh, what I would tell a person, but I ain't going to lie, like, everybody need to be filled with the Holy Ghost, man. I'm like Acts chapter 19, you know what I mean? Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? You know what I mean? If, if, you, if you want everything that God promised, you need to have all the equipment. You need to have all the equipment to fight this war. You know, it's warfare. When you talk about fighting against your sin nature, that's warfare. When you talk about fighting against the world, it said denying ungodliness and worldliness, worldly lust. You know what I mean? You 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 got to have all the equipment. You know, you 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 need to have a good foundation. And now that's not what saves you. <laughs> Remember, what saves you is your faith. You know what I mean? But your faith is going to put you in the motion. You know what I mean? You 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 got to you got to have a hunger. Anybody that's alive has an appetite. Any newborn baby got an appetite. Peter said, desire the sincere milk of the word. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm talking about practical holiness, man. To be honest, 
I'm, I'm going to give y'all some game, man. If you get saved, you need to seek God for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You know what I mean? You should be baptized in water and you should seek God for the baptism of the Holy Ghost because that's power. And then he said, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So when you get that extra dose of the spirit, when you get that full measure of the Holy Ghost that comes from the baptism of the Holy Ghost, it's going to bring more liberty. It's going to bring more freedom, or I should say it's going to manifest more freedom and more liberty in your life. The more of the word you get, it's going to manifest more freedom in your life because he said, he said, thy word is truth. John 17. And then John eight, he said, uh, in John eight, he said, you shall know the." he said, continue in my word and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So the more word you get in you, the more truth you have and the more truth you have, the more you going to experience freedom. Same thing. When you get filled with the Holy Ghost, when you get saved, you have a measure of the spirit, but you don't have the full measure. When you get baptized in the Holy Ghost, you get the full measure of the Holy Ghost. When you get the full measure, it's going to manifest more liberty. It's going to manifest more freedom in your life. You know what I mean? And uh, that's also how you renew your mind, because when you get born again, that that's a work that happens in your inner man, in your spiritual man. But it's on you to renew your mind according to the new person that you've become. When you get born again, you become a new person. But your mind don't necessarily know that your mind don't know how to conduct itself. You know, you have to learn about this new life that you done entered into. You know, what I mean, the word of God is what gets your mind right, according to the new person that you've become. You know what I mean? So faith in works. And then the more you work out your salvation, the more work that you put in because of your faith is going to actually strengthen your faith. Now, check this out. Matthew 17. He said, uh, he said they was trying to. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to tell you something about fasting. But he said, uh he wanted to cast the devil out. He said, you know, the disciples said, why couldn't we cast him out? Jesus said, because of your unbelief. Okay, so it's a faith thing, right? But then he said, uh, but this kind only come out by prayer and fasting. So what does that mean? That means that prayer and fasting does something to your faith. He said it, it does something it does something to your faith, whether it strengthens your faith or whether it purifies your faith. Because, uh, oh yeah, I'm finna get into something else. But um, uh, so when you fast and pray, it either build it, it either increases your faith or it purifies your faith by purging out the unbelief, however you want to look at it. But prayer and fasting strengthens your faith and it helps you to overcome unbelief. Now you was already saved. Now, now that was a different situation, but you already saved by faith. You know what I mean? But when you put prayer and fasting, it actually, like I said, either you can look at it like it increases your faith to overcome unbelief or it purifies your faith by purging out the unbelief. You know what I mean? Jesus said, I'm the root and the offspring of David. And he said, I'm the beginning and the end. He said, I'm the author and the finisher of our faith. And But check it out. That's what works do. Works are in the middle. Faith, faith leads to works, but works end up building your faith, though. You know what I'm saying? That's why he said, when you pray, you build yourself up on your most holy faith. See, praying is a work, but it actually strengthens your faith. You know, faith come by hearing and hearing by the word. You have faith to get saved, but the more words you get in you, the more it strengthens your faith because you recognize everything that God has for you and you believe it. You know what I mean? Especially repetition strengthens your faith. So um, we're saved by faith, but real faith always produces the right type of works the right type of lifestyle, the right type of obedience, the right type of corresponding action. So don't think if you just get saved and you're trying to live holy, you're trying to overcome this and overcome that, always put your faith in God 
but be ready to put works along with your faith. Because if you want to, if you're not getting a manifestation from God, but you want a manifestation from God, be ready to give God a manifestation from you. God, I see this in your word and I haven't experienced it. You know, I need a manifestation on that. But let me give you a manifestation of my faith. You know, out of my faith, what can I do? I'm going to manifest my faith so you manifest your word. And that's how that go. You know what I mean? Uh, fasting is a power. Fasting is the secret weapon, to be honest. You know, we already know about the word. We already know about praying. Fasting is a secret weapon, though. Fasting sensitizes you to the spirit. It get, it, it, it pushes your humanity because it's against nature to fast. You're pushing your humanity down when you you're suppressing your humanity by fasting when you suppress your humanity your spirit man comes forth that much more you know what i mean because it's the we're human but we're spirit so when you suppress your humanity it it makes you more sensitive to the spirit man you know what i mean it makes you more sensitive to the spirit man your faith is stronger uh you probably might feel the presence of god more uh, I can't guarantee that, but I do when I fast. You sleep less. You got more time for God. Um, it, sens- it, it sensitizes you to the spirit. It brings you, it just takes you deeper into the spirit realm. Uh, it destroys yokes. It destroys bondages. Yeah, fasting, man. It strengthens your faith. You know, it purifies your faith. It just may it just brings you closer to God. Fasting brings you closer to God, man. Uh, even though you're saved by faith, always be ready to put in work. The kingdom of God is compared to a, a mustard seed. What you gotta do with a seed? You gotta the soil got to be right. You got to water it. It got to get the right kind of sunlight. You know what I mean? That's work. You know what I mean? So you can't earn your salvation. That's what you got to know. You can't be good enough, perfect enough to earn your salvation. It comes through Jesus. But once you put your faith in Jesus, be ready to go to work. That's how you're going to grow. That's how you're going to grow to the measure of the fullness of the stature of Christ. Holiness is perfected through your relationship and your intimacy with God. You know what I mean? And uh, like I said, when you get saved, some stuff might fall. Some stuff will probably fall off of you. When you get baptized in water, something might fall off you. I'm talking like bad habits and stuff. And uh, when you get baptized in the Holy Ghost, stuff might fall off of you. You know, but but you still might end up in a struggle like Romans chapter seven. You you struggling with something. You know what I mean? Um, You just. You got to go after intimacy with God. He said, David was a man after my own heart. You know what I mean? That, that means you trying to get to know God. You trying to spend time with God. Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus. Intimate fellowship with God. That's what you got to have. That's what God's going to use to build you up, to grow you, to perfect you. You know what I mean? To deliver you. You know, if you're not already delivered, you got to grow. You know, you got to grow in grace. You got to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. You got to exercise yourself unto godliness through the spiritual disciplines. You know, um, yeah, everything is by faith, but this is a faith that has to be acted upon. It's a faith that has to be worked out. It's not a passive faith. You know, it's not a passive faith. And then remember, you got to have power because just because you're born again, the devil still going to try to play you. The devil still going to try to play you like you the old you. You know, the devil don't respond to authority. He respond to power. You know what I mean? And same thing with the sin nature. Your sin nature don't care that you born again. You know what I mean? He going to fight against that. The sin nature going to fight against the spirit of God that's in you. So you got to have power to overcome it. It's not just authority. 
You know what I mean? It's not just an inactive faith, but it's a faith that puts in work, a faith that stirs up power. You know what I mean? Uh, Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a faith that stirs up power. The more words you get in you, the more truth, the more freedom you're going to experience. The more of the spirit that you have and not just possessing the spirit, but you got to stir up the spirit in 2 Timothy 1, 6. He talk about stirring up the gift. How do you stir up the gift? You stir up the spirit, which is the one that the gift come from. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? You operate the gifts by the Holy Ghost. You know, you got to stir up the spirit to stir up the gift. You know, so, yeah, you, you got to stir up the spirit. You stir up the power of the spirit. All that stuff come through fellowship with God, man, intimacy with God. That's how you get from point A to point B. That's how you get through the struggle is intimacy with God. You know what I mean? And and that's the beautiful thing about grace, because even when you're struggling, you still saved. But your struggle, it got to be sincere. You know, it's, it's a difference between struggling and then just willful sin, willful, habitual, continual sin. People say they in the struggle. They not really struggling. You, you doing what you choose to do. You know what I mean? Some people say they struggling. The struggle is real and all that. But some people just doing what they choose to do. And it's not really a struggle. It's not a legit struggle, <laughs> you know. But uh, but the beautiful thing is when you really are going after God with all your heart, you can still find yourself in a struggle and God accepts you as he is. But if you continue in your relationship with God, your fellowship, your communion, spending time with God, doing the things you need to do, prayer, the word, fasting, you'll you'll come through the struggle. It was never meant for you to get stuck in the struggle, but you go through the struggle. It's like the wilderness. You know, when when you in Egypt, that's like the world. When he bring you out of Egypt, that's you coming out of the world. But now you in the wilderness. You hadn't yet got to the promised land. The promised land represents spiritual maturity. The promised land represents spiritual maturity. And there is a wilderness that you go through. You know, when he brought you out of Egypt, that's God bringing you out of the world. But the wilderness is God getting the world out of you. You know what I mean? So it's definitely a struggle that people go through, but... It's a struggle that you'll get through because because once you get to your mature state, you're not going to be living. Oh, I'm doing what I don't want to do. What I don't want to do, I keep doing. Nah, that, that that's the that's your early Christianity. That That's not mature Christianity. That's a stage that is meant for you to go through and grow through and grow to maturity. You know what I mean? Uh, what's the scripture say? Uh it's a scripture about coming into maturity or something. But, but anyway, um, uh, Hebrew six, what's that? Give me that. Give me Hebrew six, or it might be the end of Hebrews five. He said, uh, for every, yeah, Hebrews five thirteen, for everyone that useth milk, is unskillful in the word of righteousness for he is a babe. When you get saved, you're a babe in Christ. He says, but strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use, by habit, by perfection, or by reason of use, reason of habit, uh, you could say trial and error, have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. You know what I mean? It comes through experience. You know what I mean? It comes through practice. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, just sitting at the feet of God, man. You you got to grow, though. You know what I mean? And, and then casting out devils. You know, I don't believe a Christian can be, if you really born again, the devil can't possess you as far as your spirit, man. But, I mean, that devil can really cloud your mind. But I don't see how the devil, like, I I know what it is to go through mental warfare and all that, but the devil can't just, I don't see how the devil could just get control of a Christian's mind if you read in the word, if you, if you intake in the word, though. 
Like if for the devil to possess a Christian's mind, like you have to be distant from the word because the word is the light. Psalm 119, 130, man, the, the entrance of our words give light to expel the darkness. The entrance of his words bring light. So, I mean, warfare is real. Demons are real. Demons will, that they can definitely come against your mind, but you know, you, you got to fight with the word, like, you know, in, in, in activity, in activity, man, will in, in activity will hurt you. In activity will hurt you. And you got to remember, man, your faith got, you got to grow. You know, if you not seeking to grow, that means you don't have no appetite. If you not, if you don't have an appetite, you not alive. Even a baby got a hunger for the, for the, uh, even a baby got a hunger for the word, you know, desire the, the sincere milk of the word, even as newborn babes, he talking about being a new Christian. So, you know, you, you, you gotta have milk. You gotta, a baby want that milk. <laughs> you know what I mean? If you don't have an appetite for the word, did you really get born again? If you don't have an appetite to fellowship with God, did you really get born again? You know what I mean? And that appetite is going to lead you to growth. When you ingest the word, that's what you live by. It's going to cause you to grow. When you spend time with God in prayer, it's going to strengthen your spirit, man. It's going to build you up. You know, uh, and it's a beautiful thing to pray in the Holy Ghost. It's a beautiful thing to pray in the spirit, to pray in tongues, to pray spirit led prayers when the Holy Ghost join in with you. It's not just you praying from your head, but the Holy Ghost then got stirred up. He leading you and giving you what to pray for, or you praying in tongues and it's the Holy Ghost praying through your spirit. It's you working your tongue, working your mouth, but it's the Holy Ghost praying in you. You know what I mean? And, and he's leading you and guiding you and, and bringing things to your mind and, bringing up scriptures and bringing up thoughts, leading and guiding, man, I'm telling you, man, you know what I mean? That's how you perfect holiness. You, 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 I, I wouldn't say that you're going to get there overnight. And another thing you got to, you got to cut off the world because he said, he who sows to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. He who sows to the spirit shall of the spirit reap everlasting life. And you got to remember, you got the sin nature, which is the flesh, and you got the spirit. Whoever you sow to, whichever grass you water the most, that's going to be the one that grow and the one that's greener and the one that's flourishing is the one that you water the most. You know what I mean? The grass on this side or the grass on that side, the spirit or the flesh, which one are you watering? Which one are you feeding? Yeah, I'm talking about holiness, man. I'm talking about holiness, man. This is stuff like if I was to just get saved yesterday, you know what I mean? I, I know exactly what I would do. You know what I mean? But, you know, you got to cut off the world, too. You got to you got to get away from the wrong people. You know what I mean? It, it's real hard to it's harder to change when you in the same old environment. It's easier to change when you create a new environment for yourself. You know what I mean? When, when you still got the same old entertainment, the same old people, the same old environment, you know, you got to come out from among them and be separate. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got to come out and be separate, man. Just, just lessons I learned in the game, man. Lessons I learned in the game, man, walking with God. You know, you got to have the word and prayer, though. That's probably the most important thing. Spending time in the word, spending time in prayer, developing a prayer life. Because remember, this is a relationship. Jesus is a real person. God is a real person. You know what I mean? You got to have fellowship. You you know, your relationship with God got to be strong, just like with a best friend or something. You know what I mean? Like, it got to be strong, and 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 that's what it's meant to be. That's what it's supposed to be, you know. But yeah, the deliverance is real. Some people have to get deliverance, man. It's it's real. Devils are real. Spirits will attach themselves to you. Spirits will, uh, you know, try to cloud your mind. Them dark spirits, depression, and all that. Fear, fear will come over you. Try to grip you, man. The devil will act up. 
the devil will act up, man. You got to have the power to get out of here in the name of Jesus. Yeah, and, and more than that, go to the pit of hell. Don't return to the earth. Huh? Don't pass go. <laughs> don't stop. Don't pass go. Don't collect $200, huh? Yeah, right now. Leave in the name of Jesus. Be cast into the pit of hell now. Yeah, in Jesus' name, that type of stuff, man. The devil will come after you. And he don't respect, oh, you're, you're saved. Oh, he's saved. I'm going to leave him alone. Nah, he coming for your head, man. What you talking about? He, it's his job to turn you back. It's his job to cause you to lose your faith. You know what I mean? It's his job to make you backslide. Yeah, it's his job to discourage you and get you offended with God so you turn back. Yeah, I'm just talking about practical holiness, man. Uh, I had a lot, but I pretty much said what I needed to say, though. Um, yeah, sometimes if, if if there's a portion of the word of God that's not being manifested, man, give God a manifestation of your faith. And I'm not talking about sowing a financial seed, <laughs> you know, but I'm talking about, uh, I'm talking about, uh, I'm talking about uh, obedience, man. I'm talking about relationship stuff. Prayer, the word, and fasting, man. A three, a threefold cord is not quickly broken, man. Prayer, the word, and fasting. Them your three weapons. The three probably most powerful weapons. And don't go crazy with the fasting. You know, build yourself up. But uh, fa I always heard somebody say, fast where you can feel it where you can feel your flesh burning. You know what I mean? You can feel your flesh not getting what it want. That, that's how you want to fast. You know, you want your flesh to, you want to feel your flesh dying, dying out. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Yeah, but, but faith and works are so closely related that the Bible talks a lot about judging us according to our works in Revelation 20, say the dead going to be judged. It didn't say judged by their faith. It said they're going to be judged according to their works. Matthew 16, 27 said it didn't say they're going to be judged according to their faith. It said they're going to be judged according to their works. Matthew 7, 21, he didn't say those that have faith in me, huh, are going to get into heaven. Yeah, he didn't say that, did he? He said those that do the will of God. So your faith and your lifestyle, your faith and your works, your faith and your obedience, it got to line up. It got to line up because real faith is going to always produce, or I say the right faith is going to always produce the right obedience, the right lifestyle, the right corresponding action. Yeah, right faith is always going to produce right works. And then we all know about James chapter 2. Uh, but that's strange, huh? Even though we saved by faith, your faith got to, it, it, it's got to manifest itself in your lifestyle. Let your faith be manifest. Yeah, he said, I show you my faith, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, by my deeds, by my lifestyle. Faith was never meant to be alone. You're saved by faith alone. Grace through faith. You're saved by faith alone, but faith will never be alone. It's going to always produce works. It's going to always produce works. And then another thing, when I was backslid, I had faith. It was just my lifestyle. See, that's another thing. When people backslide, they don't, some people backslide because they really lose faith. Like, man, I don't believe the Bible no more. Like some people backslide like that. But anytime I was ever backslid, I never doubted whether Jesus was the son of God. I never doubted whether he uh, died for my sins. I never backslid in faith, but I backslid in my lifestyle. And I was on my way to hell, even though I had faith. You know, a faith that doesn't produce holiness, a faith that doesn't lead you and guide you in the holiness, that, 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 that's not a real faith. If it doesn't guide you. And, and here's another thing I got to say. You know, people always be saying, I, I hear this a lot.
people be like, uh, you know, you have to have a relationship with God, uh, but you got to have more than a relationship with God. <laughs> Just because you got a relationship with God don't mean you finna go to heaven. Matthew chapter seven. Yeah, we cast out demons in your name. And, and in the judgment, you know, God knows what's true and what's not in the judgment. I don't think they're going to be lying about stuff that they did in the judgment. If they say, Jesus, we cast out demons in your name. I believe they really cast out demons in his name. If they, they say we prophesied in your name, I believe they really prophesied in his name. So these people probably had some type of relationship. Yeah, people be saying that. They was like, they was like, you have to have a relation. Yeah, you do, but you got to have more than that. <laughs> you got to have a relationship with God and a holy life because you can be backslid and still have a it's a lot of people living in sin, but they pray. It's a lot of people living in sin, but they pray. It's people living in sin, but they read the Bible. When I was backslid, I had a I had a decent relationship with him. I spent time with God almost every day, but I was living a I was living a double life though. And when I say double life, I don't mean like I was trying to hide it, like I was undercover about anything, but I was just I was I was drinking from I was drinking the salt water and the fresh water. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Straight up. Yeah, I had a relationship. It's more than relationship. It's relationship. You got to have a right relationship. Because I hear that a lot. People be like, you have to have a relationship with God. Yeah, you got to have more than that, though. You got to have a holy life. Yeah, you got to be in pursuit of holiness. You're not going to perfect holiness overnight. So, you know, people do go through that Romans 7 wilderness stage. I went through it. You know what I mean? But, it, but you know, you, you'll grow out of that just like they went through the wilderness. Now, unbelief and, and different things can cause you to be in the wilderness for an extended season. If you don't really trust God or, you know what I mean, or whatever, or you don't really... Or you don't really, you don't really seek God. You don't really want to spend time with God. But, you know, I question people's salvation, though. Like, if you don't want to spend time with God, you know what I mean? Or, you know, because wilderness is the is a real struggle. But if you look at the Israelites in the wilderness, that they brought a lot of stuff on themselves. But, but there is a season that you can go through where you sincerely want God but you struggling with stuff because your mind is still being renewed. You still being taught about the kingdom of God. You still learning the tools of the trade. You still learning, you know what I mean? What's going, what, you know, you still learning what's going to work for you and, and what, you know what I'm saying? What, what's required of the child of God. And you still learning secrets and things about the kingdom of God that's going to cause you to experience the victory that you seeking after. You know what I mean? You don't come into full victory overnight. In the spirit, you do. You know what I'm saying? But to actually experience it, nah, that don't come overnight. It's a lot of things you got to learn and put in practice and allow them things to, to bear fruit in your life. You know what I mean? So the Romans 7 wilderness is real. You know what I mean? But it ain't you ain't got to be in that season no extended amount of time. You know, you, you, you can really get about the business and and experience quick growth, quick growth. If you, if you want to, you know what I mean? You can experience quick growth if you want to. And th this is probably, I'm going to start the next video, man. I'm going to keep going. <laughs>